Yes, it's possible now to create the games we've been dreaming about. It's always been my dream to travel around and make my own games. And we took a stab at it, and it was pretty hard to get your game published. But when the iPhone SDK was announced, that was when I knew the opportunity was right, and it was really going to be something special. We finally made a game that we were really happy with, and we submitted it. About one in the morning, we looked and we saw Dizzy Bee available. We just exploded. We were so excited. Finally got, our, got a game published. A female physician is sitting uh, at her departmental meeting. She has Air Shabobi running right beside her, and she starts to notice some changes that worry her, so she quietly grabs her keys and leaves. By the time the nurses first recognize this and say, uh-oh, you know, we may have a problem, and they call her, she says, hey, I'm in the hospital, and I'll be right there. I was in San Francisco last year during the World Series, the Phillies versus the Rays, and I was waiting for a flight to come home at uh, the airport. There are a bunch of Philly fans watching the game on TV, and in the middle of the game, the iPhone commercial that we did came on. So they all pull out their iPhones and download the app right there. They're like all excited because they can go take the app with them when they get on the plane and not miss anything of the World Series they're about to take off and go home. I created Game Loft to be able to come back to the roots of the gaming experience for users. Progressively, it has become a very specialist experience, and I felt that it was not fair. So I said, we'll create a new company to make sure that everyone would be able to have fun and play all over the world. And it's working because we sell millions of games. On the iPhone, everything behaves as you expect it. And the tools are, they're simple, but they mask this like incredible amount of power underneath. It's really the first time that we've been able to take a platform and now go to our designers and say, there's no limitations. What Apple's done is made it so we can just focus on what we do best. And they've taken care of all the details. In fact, sometimes, I have to stop and say, wow, this, this is a mobile device I'm developing for because it feels like a desktop application API. I think with the SDK 3.0, we will be able to create without limits. And in terms of experience, end users will clearly move a step forward and will never want to come back. It's hard to express how cool the new streaming technology really is. I mean, being able to watch a live game on your phone for the first time, I'm just, I think everyone here is really excited about that. The push notification API is going to be great. The physician could take the application and they could customize exactly f for individual patients what alerts they wanted to see. So that way they know if they're getting an alert, this is something I really want to take a look at. I'm hoping there'll be like a generation of kids who grew up like, oh yeah, I got box scores and watch games on my phone. It was just like part of the experience of baseball. Developing for the iPhone SDK actually makes it fun again for a developer. This is going to be the dominant platform, the dominant device, and it will dominate in healthcare. I think that I'll probably never go back to making games in the traditional way again. Having the power to submit it and have lots of people download it and enjoy it has been really great. You build the app, you upload it, specify the countries you want it, the prices you want, and then it's out there for the entire world to see. My favorite app is Bike Gear. My favorite app is Surf Report. My favorite app is Librarian. Facebook. App Engine. My favorite app is Color Sutra. Le Monde. Zenbound. Tourism Fleur. Piano. Airstrip OB. Maya. Camera Bag. Koi Pondo des. Mint. Pulse 877. My application préférée is Ride the Sailor. Backman. My Netflix program is MLB. Visual. Multi Quiz. Asphalt Four. Shazam. Taxi. It really has been an amazing year, and we owe it to our developers, so thank you. Let's talk about what's next, and that is iPhone OS 3.0. This is a major update to the iPhone operating system. It brings with it more than 100 new features. Let me highlight just a few, starting with cut, copy, and paste. We are bringing a nice, simple, beautiful touch-based interface for cut, copy, and paste to the phone. When you make a selection, you get this nice cut, copy, paste bubble 
right above your selection. So cut, copy, and paste. It works across all apps, both the apps that come with the phone and apps downloaded from the App Store. We've also added undo support. With a simple shake gesture, you can undo your last action. We also, of course, have developer APIs. So if you'd like to extend the pasteboard with your own data type, you're free to do so. And the Coco Touch text controls come with support for cut, copy, and paste built in. So depending on how you use the controls, you can get cut, copy, and paste in your application for free. Cut, copy, paste. Next is landscape. Ever since 1.0, we've had support for landscape in Safari, including support for this nice wide landscape keyboard when entering text on the web. When well, iPhone OS 3.0, we're taking landscape and that landscape keyboard to all of our key applications, including mail, notes, and messages. Now, speaking of messages, the big news here is MMS. This allows you to send and receive photos, contacts, uh, audio files, and locations all in real time over the cell network. And we've taken all of that support and put it in the same app that also supports text messaging. So one app to send text and multimedia. Now, MMS requires carrier support as well. 29 of our carrier partners in 76 countries around the world will support MMS at the launch of iPhone OS 3.0. In the United States, AT&T will be ready to support MMS later this summer. Next. <laughs> search. We are taking search beyond just searching your contacts and allowing you to search your calendars, your music, your notes, and your email. And the great part about searching your email is you can search not only the messages that have been downloaded to your phone, but you can also search the potentially thousands of messages back on your mail server. You can search, find exactly the message you're looking for, download that message along with its attachments, and read it on your iPhone wherever you are. In addition to all of this search support, we're also adding Spotlight. Spotlight is a single location on your home screen that allows you to search across your phone. You can even search for applications. So if you're like me and you have well over 100 applications on your phone, you can just type a few characters, find the app you're looking for, and launch it right from Spotlight. That's search. Next, iTunes. We've got some nice enhancements to iTunes. You'll now be able to rent and purchase movies right from your phone. This is great if you're at an airport and you're about to get on a flight and you want to get a movie, you can rent or purchase it right there, wirelessly download it, and then watch it. You can also purchase TV shows, music videos, and audiobooks. And because we care deeply about education, we've taken and put support for iTunes U right on the phone. Next are some important additions to parental controls. In addition to the parental controls we already support for things like controlling access to Safari or YouTube, we've added control over a number of other items. Most importantly, control, fine grain control for movies, TV shows, and apps from the App Store. That means that a parent can limit their child to only viewing, say, G, and PG movies. Likewise, you can limit your child to only running apps from the App Store that are age-appropriate. Parental controls. Next. <laughs> Tethering. Tethering allows you 
to share your iPhone's